Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share us with your network. We want everybody to know how good we got it over here. All right, business owners, today is all about for you. So you know how you go to networking events and you have, they ask you all the questions like, what do you do? Where can I find you? And you try to send people over to your website. What does your website look like? Is it a hot mess? Can you fix it? Can it be better? What does anybody even care? Today, I want to introduce you to somebody who says that the internet is a jungle, and he's going to be our guide through it. Y'all, please say hello to my friend, CJ Gilbert. Hi, CJ. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me here today. Oh, my gosh. The pleasure is all mine. Okay, talk to me about the Indiana Jones hat, because I'm a fan. You got it. Absolutely. So as you said, the internet is a jungle. And when I say that to people, they they love that they really resonate with that because everyone has that experience of being lost of think you're headed down the right track and then you just feel lost in the end you went down the wrong and you went down the wrong street you don't know where you're headed or you end up stuck and alone or you've tripped into the quicksand and you can't pull yourself out of it or there's scary noises and you don't know where they're coming from and so i advise people to join up with a tribe of people or hire a well-trained guide so you can be led through the jungle and get where you want to go I love all of that. And I'm sure many of us watching it have been there, especially the quicksand, the scary noises, and oh my gosh. So CJ, <laughs> tell me a little bit about how you got started because you have a lot of experience, my friend. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's no surprise to those that hang around me that I've been a computer geek all my life. And so it was very natural in the year 1995, the internet was born. And I was in high school and a couple friends of mine uh, were fortunate enough to work for another friend's dad at his computer company. He uh, built computers and serviced them. Uh, and so he needed a web team to start helping people with websites. And so that's where I first learned about it and started playing around with it and have tinkered with it kind of ever since then. Uh, and then through a series of events, ended up opening my own company in 2006. And I've been doing it full time ever since. It is phenomenal. So I love the web guy. So you are a self-proclaimed web guy. Why does anybody need a web guy? Because, you know, websites, everybody can do them now by themselves. You can do it on Wix. My gosh, GoDaddy has one. And I mean, you could probably buy a website at Walmart. I'm just putting that out there, y'all. So what, what's the big deal about the websites these days? Great, great question. So the very first thing I want to talk about is the importance of a website. And I get this question all the time because people are like, do I even still need a website? I have Facebook, I have Instagram, right. I have, you know, whatever they're using, right? And I say those things are great because that's where your people are. Those platforms are fantastic because that's where people are. And if you hang out there, you'll be able to talk to people. That's what we're trying to do is connect, right? right. But here's the biggest thing. If you hear nothing else I say the entire time, hear this one phrase. Your website is the only thing you can fully own and control on the internet. Whoa, that right there was the worth the price of admission because you've seen it in the news. Everybody's boycotting everything. Folks are taking over stuff. The, you know, the rumor that this platform may be gone, so you need to move over to another one. But you just said the only thing you own is your website. I That's love right. that. Why do I care that I need to own my website? Absolutely. You've got to have a place that you can own, you can control, you can publish, and you can decide what gets published there and what happens to it. Because if you put, if you're trusting somebody else or some other organization, maybe to always have your back or to, or to be there when you need them, haven't you heard of people, other professionals that have, you know, through their fault or through no fault of their own, they've suddenly lost access to their Facebook page or their group or whatever it is that they were running. And it was it was a moneymaker for them. It was one of their profit centers. And all of a sudden it's gone. And and that's devastating. And mm -hmm. really, when we're using these other platforms, we're at their mercy. And so it, it's 
it's the double-edged sword, right? We need those platforms. We want to be on them. Again, that's where the people are. I think you should be educated and use those. But I always also want you to remember in the back of your mind, your website is the only thing you can fully own and control. That is so crazy and so true. So everybody in the business has a website. Everybody who starts a business think, I need a website. And they go out and create a website. What's the difference between a really phenomenal website and did your kid do that for you? <laughs> That's a great question. And I do advise people to have a professional looking design because it is true that there's a lot of tools out there that make it easy to create a website, but it may not look the best or it may, you know, you can kind of tell when you look at a website if it's a really professional polished website or mm -hmm. if it looks you know like someone kind of threw it together sure. and it, whether it's fair or not that's mm -hmm. people's first impression of you and your business and wow. if they think that you're sloppy with your website and how you're presenting yourself they're just going to assume you're going to be sloppy with your own business and your services that is so true and like you said fair or not it is the reality of doing business on the internet that's right because when you go to these networking events and we've all been there you go to the networking event you have two thousand cards that you're going to pass out you know whatever like hors d'oeuvres and the one thing that people do they go to your website or they'll ask you you know do you have a website and they go to it and they are going to determine quickly what kind of person you are, what kind of business you do, and if you're going to worth, be worth my time and money. So if I were to go to your website or anybody's website, actually, what are some things that I need to be looking for when you're talking about a professional looking website? Absolutely. Great question. You know, I think that it's something that you should be able to easily navigate. Let me give you a couple you know, let's get right to a couple tips about the way I want you to look at your website, because I think the answers are inside this. And I like to teach people that I believe your website is your number one tool because mm -hmm. it's the only thing you can own and control online. It's therefore your number one tool to, to uh, grow and support your business. And if you think of it like a business tool, then you can begin to use it as a tool for your sales and your customer service and what I also refer to as your search. So let's start with the idea of the search. People are searching for you online. They may be searching for you by name personally. They may be searching for the name of your business, your book, your show, your podcast, but it starts with the search. What are they gonna find when they search for you? Is it your website or is it somebody else's website or what somebody mm. else is saying about you? Mm. So that's the first thing I want you to consider is your search. Okay. And then there's your sales. And I think that this is mo for most people and most businesses, this is probably their number one goal for their website is to use it as part of their sales. And I think that's excellent. People are coming to your website and they're going to get that first impression. And right. here's the magic phrase. If you want to make more sales on your website, remember this phrase, people choose the familiar. Mm. People choose the familiar. What do people right. choose? Yeah. Familiar. That's right. <laughs> over and over. <laughs> over and over. People are going to come to your website. They're going to look around. They're going to see pictures of you and your staff, and they're going to begin to develop that familiar feeling inside of themselves. And then when they're ready to make that buying decision, they're going to look at that familiar feeling. They're going to look at that feeling and they're going to use that to make their decision. That and is we so used good. to think people made a buying decision based entirely off of facts and reason and logic. And now we know that's not true at all. People make their decisions entirely off of how they feel and then they justify it with the facts. Wow. So I say we do both. We let them get to know us. We also give them the facts, give them the information that they're looking for. But yeah. keep in mind, they're getting to know you. And that's a really important part of them choosing to do business with you. True story. Wow. I, I'm, I'm just struck. I'm, I'm taking mental note, but I get to go back and look this 500 times and write Absolutely. down everything. And, and these are <laughs> such great tips because you hear a lot of people, especially in the coaching space right now, they mm -hmm. will tell you, and I've seen it ever, you don't need a website. Nobody, you know, you don't need a website to do business. What would you say to that? I, I would, I would be like, what are you going to do then? Like, how, how, where are you going to send them? You know, what's on the other end of that search when people are looking for you? 
You've mm-hmm. got to have a web. A website is so powerful because it can become the hub of everything else. I I now encourage people to use their own website for themselves. This gets a little bit into the point of customer service where you can use your website as a place where people can get resources and information. But I begin to use my website for me when I'm out there talking to people and they're and I'm telling them about resources I have or free trainings that they can access. Where am I going to send them? I've built a page on my website that I can send people to that they can click on the thing that's going to interest them the most. So I use my website for other people, but I use it for me too. It's a tool for your business. Yeah, I love that. It is a tool for your business because a lot of us that are in business, we're like, I have a business. Yay, you. I'm really (laughs) good at the thing that I do. Yay, me. Right. People that I've worked with know that I'm really good at my stuff. Yay, us. But I don't, there's no place that anybody can find me. You yeah. know, word of mouth isn't all the thing. So CJ, this is so cool because you you mentioned earlier that professional looking websites really matter because again, mm-hmm. that whole first impression episode. So I have a website says a business owner and it's really good. Does my website need to have 50 pages and 25 tabs to be professional? Oh, great question. No, it does not. A website can be as simple or as complicated as you need it to be. And I always say, start simple. Start with the thing you need now. Maybe it's your logo, then it's then it's your picture. Oh, let's add your name. How about your phone number? Maybe your email address, maybe a couple social media links. And you know what? It just starts building up over time. Start See, simple and, I like that. and add as you need it. Yeah, I, I I love hearing that because you know sometimes being a business owner already already is a little daunting. Absolutely. And then you add on top of that, oh, and you need a you need your business card, you need a team, you need this, and now you need a website. <laughs> Holy cow! I'd rather not. <laughs> Never mind. I'll just go back to work at wherever. Right. You know. So, yes. Thing, you know, get you a professional, somebody to help walk through, walk you through this. So now I'm looking for a professional. What do I need to be looking for? Uh, great questions. You want to, you want to see what, what's on their portfolio, see some of the websites they've created, see if you can hear what their clients are saying, or even maybe talk to some of their clients. It's really difficult for someone to choose a professional in an area that they don't really know about. How do you know what questions to ask? How do you know if you're asking the right questions? I actually recommend that people use their website as a way to to teach some of that information. You know, one of the things you can do to aid your customers on your own website is a frequently asked questions page. That's a place where you could answer questions that people are asking before they want to work with you and I also say add some should be asked questions because again, Mm. people, as they're looking to do business with you, they don't even know what they need to ask. (laughs) Kind of ask it and answer it for them ahead of time. And bonus tip on that FAQ page, when you're answering those questions, you're using keywords you're probably not using anywhere else on your website. So it's excellent for search engine optimization too. To add oh that goodness. FAQ page. I love this is such good stuff. But wait, y'all, there's more. Not only is he the web geek, the jungle guide, and all things, but he is also an author. That is correct. He has an amazing book out and it's in its third edition. Tell us a little bit about your book, CJ. Absolutely. You know, I mentioned I opened my business in 2006 and I started working with local business owners in my area. And I found out really quickly that most business owners know they need a website, but they have Mm. no idea what to do with it. And Mm -hmm. that's when I just started writing down some of my thoughts. I thought back through my own experience of working in different companies. I had different roles over time. First, I was the the file clerk, and then I answered phones, and then I helped them with the computers, and then I ended up driving a truck, and then I was in customer service, and then I got into sales, and then, you know, I learned all these things. And so now when I sit down and I ask myself, what is a website supposed to do? I realized it's supposed to do all those jobs I was doing all along. It's supposed to be used as a sales tool to help people guide guide people through your sales journey and provide yeah. the the information they need along the way it's supposed to be a customer service agent i don't know about answer the phone but it can answer questions it can provide and that is so great because we're looking for these books we're looking for these tools and your Absolutely. book is actually called the five golden keys to sharpen your website mm-hmm. 
And if you all are looking for a way to sharpen your website, you need questions to ask, you are not sure where to begin, this book is a rock star resource. And yes, it's on Amazon. Yes, shameless plug, but don't worry. We're going to have that there too. So G CJ, do you also do coaching for people who need help with their websites? Yes, absolutely. I would say half of what I do is the building a new website from start to finish. And then the other half of what I do, I call it web coaching. And it basically means I'm working with someone just like this through Zoom or through some platform like this. Mm -hmm. And we're working on things It could be a strategy conversation. Why do I want to do things? Do I need a landing page? Do I need a sales funnel? Do I need social media or email marketing? Or it could be we're logging into the website, we're making changes, we're, we're adding things right then. It's usually a combination of both. That's cool. If yeah. somebody wanted to work with you, CJ, where could they find you? Absolutely. Uh, so my my main website is Jungle Studios. That's jungle-studios.com. And that's where you can learn about the website business. I've got a couple of resources that I'll share with you too in a moment that I want you to go to get some more information. But that's the place to go to find all my main contact info. And you'd email me, call me, text me, and find a lot more resources there as well. Jungle-studios. So good. I got another question for you because Again, when I started my business, I was doing the same thing, looking for where to find resources to get this, you know, amazing website up and running. CJ, there are websites that can cost you $5 or $15,000 to create. What is the difference between those and why does why can it cost so much? That's a great question. Um, I've actually got some YouTube videos that go into this a little bit deeper. So I'll direct you there for a more detailed answer. And yet for now, I'll just say there's different kinds of websites. A, a website can be vastly different from, as we talked about, maybe a page with a logo and a phone number. You know, what I call the business card size website, but it could have more information. It could be a long landing page or sales page. It could be multiple pages. It could be more complicated. It could have e-commerce commerce functionality or membership portals or, you know, all kinds of things. So websites can be very little, very big and everywhere in between. And so depending on where you are, will depend on what you need and how much you're willing or needing to spend on that website. Is that about exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. Correct. It's all about what you need it to do for you and your goals and your target market there and that's a whole nother conversation y'all this is such good stuff and i hope you brought out your pen and if not just watch it over and over and over and don't worry i'm going to put all of cj's contact information in the description below because i want you to get out there and find him because who wants an ugly website nobody it's like having an ugly business card nobody wants that oh my gosh cj my friend before i let you go we got to play a game okay all right, so this game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two, maybe three things, and you just tell me which one you like the best. Hmm. Are you ready to play? Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Grits or oatmeal? Ooh, I guess oatmeal. Okay. Yellow light, slow down or speed up? Slow down. So proud of you. Is the You're better not, answer. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the should answer, right? Okay. That's correct. But you're in California. So do they That's slow true. down or speed up? Which one? Well, my, ki my kids could watch this and they're learning to drive right now. So let's say slow down. <laughs> yeah, slow down, freaking kids. Don't be going yourself. that fast to begin with. There you go. Good <laughs> answer, dad. Shopping online or in the store? Ooh, gosh, I, it, you'd think I'd go online, but I think I'll go in the store. Yeah, me too. I still like mm -hmm. to try stuff on. On the airplane, window seat or aisle seat? Aisle seat. Okay. Toilet mm -hmm. paper roll. Over or under? Over. Well done. This is such a hot debate. And I love these. Okay. House slippers or barefoot? Well, I guess I got to go house slippers. Okay. You said you yes. Okay. That's all right. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. judging anybody. Would, just it, would it amuse you to see that I'm wearing jungle Crocs right now? <laughs> Surprise there. 
No <laughs> surprise there. All right. TikTok or Twitter? Twitter. East Coast or West Coast? I'm on the West Coast. I got to go West Coast. Got to go there. Okay. Exercise or extra fries? Ooh, I think I have to go exercise this year. <laughs> this year. Again, the should answer. Got that's it. That's right. Prince or Michael Jackson? Ooh, that's hard. Let's go Michael Jackson. Let's do it. Reality TV, yes, please, or I'd rather not? Uh, my wife will watch them, so I'll watch them with her. Okay, so. good honey. Good it, so honey. the answer is yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Be married forever. Perfect. <laughs> The Super Bowl, the game or the commercials? The commercials. Me too. Yeah, oh, for me. Except for this past year because the Eagles were playing. So, you know, I had okay. to Okay. Yeah. All right. The exceptions. Yeah. Yes, that's right. All <laughs> right. And finally, what is one thing you wish people knew about you? Hmm. Well, I got to let you know I'm a musician. I play the piano and the drums. And I my piano is my number one instrument, but drums are so much fun. I've been playing a lot of drums lately at my church. See, but I also know that you're a singer songwriter. Yeah, that may be true. Yes, I'm a stalker. <laughs> it is what it is. CJ, thank you so much for your time. This thank has been you, so Ricky. much fun. Uh, so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's it for this time. But don't worry, we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday presents.